Ana he ana, ana he ana, ana he ana yo he ana yo he ana yo. Ana he ana he ana ana he ana he yo. Ana he ana he ana ana he ana he yo. The Segesser Hyde paintings are invaluable to the history and patrimony of New Mexico, and there's a number of reasons for that. One is they were done so early, and they're one of the earliest visual accounts of New Mexican life, and so they date some to sometime between 1720 and 1729. <laughs> Segesser one is, is a more mysterious painting, and there are two major pieces missing. And so as a result of these pieces missing, we haven't pinned down the exact battle. Now the, the scene in the painting is a battle, and it looks like it's between two groups of Native Americans, the, the Apaches that we've identified, and someone who are allies to the Spanish. And why do we say allies to the Spanish? Because they're dressed in part in Spanish uniforms and using Spanish um, weaponry. The faces are, are Native American, but one of the people on horseback is completely dressed in Spanish outfit with the Spanish epaulets, you know, as an officer. You know, it looks like he has feathers on his head, but what it is is that there's actually a helmet, and he's attacking on horseback in full kind of leather armor. You know, the horse is covered and everything, and then behind him come others. And, and, and it's almost, you know, textbook European strategy of attack, an array of attack. And so the main, main army will be behind them. And we don't know who's in that main army, and that's that's the big question. There's a mesa in this, and on top of the mesa are these women and children who all have these happy faces, and from the way their hair is done up and everything, we can tell those are Pueblo Indians. And so they're probably captives of, of, the, uh, of the Apaches, and the, uh, the people attacking the Apaches are there to release the Pueblo captives. Dicen que las colondrinas y un bolido pasan el mar. Dicen que las We know from Segesser uh, II, for example, the battle, the Viasur battle, we know from descriptions of the battle from the survivors what happened in that battle. And, and it's all been pieced together by all this testimony, but uh, the painting itself has it all there. Uh, and so it's almost eerie in, in the accuracy. Battle itself was important in that it was a battle over territory between France and, and Spain and Europe. They went to war and so of course the colonies got to fight each other. And there was this big, big fear in Mexico City that the French were going to send an army into the Spanish Empire through, through the Illinois country into New Mexico. And so the governor here had to send an expedition, actually two of them. This was the second one and find the French. And they didn't find the French, but they heard about the French. And then they were ambushed in, in the confluence of the Loop and Platte River in, in Nebraska, present day Nebraska, if you can imagine. A full third of, of uh, the soldiers in New Mexico were killed in that battle. And then there's the final stand, and the final stand is probably the most obvious thing in the focus of the painting. And those are the guys that all died. And what they're doing, they're in a circle, almost back to back. If you look close at the faces, each one is individualized. There's everything from uh, ecstasy to despair. The Spanish and, and the uh, Pueblo Indians are on horseback, and you can see that clearly in this. Uh, their horse herd is off to the right being guarded. There were no horses on the plains at that time. So none of the Plains Indians had horses, and so uh, the Pawnees and the Otos who are doing the attacking are on foot. The Frenchmen are, they're, they're dressed like uh, colonial soldiers, you know, with the tri-caps and, and, and that kind of stuff. The New Mexican uh, soldiers from, from the Presidio here are kind of dressed really neat, you know, they're kind of cool, man. If I was going to dress, I'd look that way, because, you know, women would swoon and stuff. I mean, they have, you know, like a leather jacket and pantaloons, and, and, and they have the Ardaga shield, which is kind of a bullhide shield and then they have these wide-brimmed hats, flat, wide-brimmed hats. Uh, and then the weaponry, uh, the muskets that the Spanish are using are Mikolay locks, which is what Spain used. So they have those, and, and they're actually shooting them from their hip, which is really how they did it. The other things that are really interesting are the attacking uh, uh, people, the uh, Pawnees and Otos. 
Uh, for example, there's in here a spear that's covered with buffalo hide. Well, that's been described in documents, but never seen. We even have a good guess as to who the two painters were, which even adds to the mystery of it all. Ooh, you know, and, and, that, and it's a father-son combination with the surname of Tejeda. If that's true, the son died in this expedition, in the Viasur expedition. So the father was executing a painting in which his son, you know, of, of a scene in which his son had died. So for all those reasons, uh, the, these uh, paintings are unique in this country. I mean, they're, they're almost like the Bayou Tapestries are to, say, Europe. You know, you know they are to not just New Mexico, but to the United States.